I'm here for my review of WWE Battleground 2015. Uh, I haven't seen Battleground 2013, but this is better than last year's Battleground. I'll say that. But again, some booking decisions bring this show down. And that's a shame, but... Uh, again, as usual, the kickoff match, while I'll talk about it, will not count towards the show rating. Although, since we're only six matches on the main show anyway, why don't you just throw the kickoff match to the main show to give a seventh match? But, uh, kickoff match was the Battle for the Crown. R Truth versus King Barrett. Uh, okay little match, but King Barrett won. Which means that at least he's not going to be a totally useless King of the Ring. So on to the main show. The, our opening contest is Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Two guys that the WWE seems to just love putting in the ring against each other, despite the fact that they are utterly boring half the time when they wrestle. Was this a good match? Yes. It was. It was two and a half stars to three stars. Orton won with the RKO out of nowhere, pretty much. I just think the fin... Yeah, you know what? It is two and a half, because the finish is this. Sheamus hits the bro kick, he picks Orton up for something, and then Orton just catches him with an RKO. Yeah. Normally, people in their hometown lose. Orton won here, so, yeah. Good for Orton, but the match was a typical Orton-Sheamus match. These two guys do not have good chemistry, and we've seen them wrestle several times, including about two or three over the past week, over the past month on Raw. So, yeah. Good match, two and a half stars. Then we get the Dodi Tag Team Championship match. The primetime players versus New Day members Kofi Kingston and Big E with Xavier Woods at ringside. Let me tell you something. New Day's gimmick may be bad and stupid and stereotypical, and it is. But these three guys are at least making it fun. It's fun to interact with their clap and how many different rhythmical combinations you can come up with towards a little new day rocks clap like that. It's fun to experiment with that. Or like prime time players kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that makes New Day interesting. Uh, and I think that New Day and PTP actually could have several good matches together if they could have a story to tell though. Because again, there's no story to why these matches is happening. And that's the problem. If you want to try to bring back the tag team division, fine, but make a storyline around it. You know, make storylines around it. Uh, good match, though. Three stars. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, PTP won, which I was kind of actually surprised about. I, wouldn't, I didn't think I'd actually win. I didn't do a prediction vid because I didn't know all the matches. So, yeah. And one of the matches that was announced ended up not happening. I didn't even know about that till like, Friday. So, but I would have predicted New Day in this case, and I would have predicted Orton for Orton Sheamus, so I would have been one-on-one -on -one at this point, if I did a prediction bit. Uh, so then we get Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns in a good match. Uh, I don't know why Bray Wyatt won, because the finish here is Bray Wyatt wins with Luke Harper coming in and super kicking uh, Roman Reigns, which allows uh, Bray Wyatt to, I think, hit Sister Abigail and win the match. Uh, I guess this is going to set up Reigns and a partner versus Wyatt and Harper at SummerSlam, I guess. And I heard that, and there's a rumor that that partner might be Sting. Personally, though, if you're going to involve Sting in anything at SummerSlam, you might as well put him in a single match against Bray Wyatt, which also could explain why Bray won. But, honestly, if where they're going, I don't think that Reigns and Harper are anyone to be interested in by themselves, so they might be going the tag team route with Reigns and Sting versus uh, the two former members of the Wyatt family. Wyatt and Harper. We'll find out on Raw about that. Uh, two and a half stars, not a bad match. But the two and a half stars is for the last four minutes, because up till that point, this is a fairly boring match. Where the only way I kept from falling asleep during most of this match was I was trying to figure out what the back of Bray Wyatt's shirt said. 
Yeah, that's how bored I got watching most of this match. I was trying to figure out what a shirt said. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then we get a match that was not announced until the night of the show because, well, they had to drop a match due to the, due to right back staff infection. But it turned out to be a good decision as it's Charlotte versus Brie Bella versus Sasha Banks. One ha one third of Team Page, one T one third of Team Bad, Beautiful and Dangerous, and of course one third of Team Bella. Uh, and this is actually a much better Diva match than the majority of Diva matches around, so maybe they're serious with this whole Diva revolution. However, now that Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky Lynch are on the main roster, they could get dubbed up, they could become Diva-fied and become a traditional WWE Diva, which I really hope doesn't happen, because with those three on the main roster, you know, you have... It, it has to rely on other people. I think those three were the were becoming the cornerstone of the Diva roster down in NXT. So if them gone from NXT, well, Sasha will still be around there until she loses the NXT Women's Championship. But those three gone from NXT, it's up to women like Bailey and whatnot to step up now. A good match though, Charlotte wanted to figure eight. I would have actually given it to Sasha Banks and had Sasha Banks win by uh and. By doing that, I would have had Sasha pin Nikki. That way you say that the NXT Women's Champion beat the Divas Champion. Uh, but the only thing that, I re that they're really serious with this is if Nikki Bella loses the Divas Championship to either Charlotte, Becky, or uh, Sasha. All three of them, either one of the three would work because I think Charlotte's got the pedigree. She's the best player wrestler of the bunch because she's better than her brother David. We don't know if she would have been better than she, if she's better than her brother Reed because Reed tragically committed suicide or died of a drug overdose a couple of years ago. But she is the best of the flares that wrestle, other than her father, of course. Uh, and Becky Lynch has a very unique character. That I will say this, Stephanie putting Becky with Paige is interesting because it sets up something very historical to happen. You could actually branch off that to a Paige and Becky Lynch feud and it would make sense because historically the English and the Irish don't get along. So you could potentially branch off Paige versus Becky Lynch from this little diva revolution story. Good match though. Three stars. So then we get one of the two matches that really matter on this show. John Cena versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship and another match of the year contender. Yeah, all three of their matches are match of the year contenders. Although I think this this one is probably their weakest as it goes into way Superman mode for both guys. But here's my thing. Do I think Kevin Owens should have won this match? Yes, I do. I think he should have won the U.S. title, but I will say this. I maintain, and I've always been maintaining, that if they do want to have Kevin Owens win the U.S. championship from John Cena, they have to do it at SummerSlam, which is the second biggest show of the year. So it would be like him winning, the top, winning beating Cena at like a WrestleMania or something. I maintain that, and I hopefully that's what they're going to do is hold this off for Owens to beat Cena at SummerSlam. But given that he tapped out to Cena, I don't really know. But the argument can be made that because Owen kicked out of John Cena's super attitude adjustment, which has no one's ever kicked out of, and I'm talking about he's hit it on people like Randy Orton, Batista, Sheamus, and none of them have ever kicked out of the super attitude adjustment, that it does in a way put Owens over even in a loss for Cena allowing him to kick out of the super attitude adjustment. So... Like I said, I hope they do a rematch at SummerSlam and Owens wins a championship there. Because I think that's where he should win it. But then again, it also makes me think that if they were going to do that, then you should have just started this feud at Money in the Bank. Had Owens win, since it was non title of Owens win under a shady kind of thing, then Cena wins at Battleground, and then Owens wins clean at SummerSlam. That clean win should have happened at SummerSlam, and not a throwaway pay-per-view that wasn't even meant to be a pay-per-view. So, yes, it helped Kevin Owens in the long run, that on his first match on the main WWE roster, he pinned John Cena clean, but it was on a show that really <laughs> didn't matter. Uh, so then we get the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, this is a short match. It was nine minutes, and Brock dominated the majority of those nine minutes. Uh, Taylor goes to a no contest when The Undertaker shows up. 
and Tombstone's Brock. So I guess that at SummerSlam we're going to have an Undertaker Brock Lesnar rematch for WrestleMania 30, where I guess Taker will get the win back for WrestleMania 30. Uh, now, do I think in the storyline it makes very little sense for the Undertaker to actually want revenge for the streak ending over a, for nearly a, almost uh, like what 15 months after it ended? Uh, no, but, eh, what you gonna do? Maybe they're building up to where at WrestleMania, Taker and Sting fought face off for the WWE World Weight Championship in a dual retirement match, and the winner retires the champion. I don't know. Who knows what they're doing with this? Uh, as far as what Rollins and Lesnar was, I give it one star. Because, as I said, it was predominantly a squash match. Rollins got enough in to make it not a squash, but it needed more time. It needed more time. Uh, so, all in all, I think Battleground was a very good show. Uh, uh, it was better than last year's show. Uh, so, and I know that I missed a Money in the Bank. I know I missed a Money in the Bank review and whatnot. And I, I know I missed a Money in the Bank review. Uh... Sorry about that. Sometimes they get too busy and forget to do these reviews. So that's my review for Battleground. Uh, all the stuff, including its rating in terms of show, will be down in the description. So if you like the video, like button is down there. Subscribe button is down there. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.